Hey, Özgür here from digidemi.com. Today's lesson is all about track mats in After Effects. Now, you may have used track mats before, or if you haven't, you must have seen them before. They'll always appear in your timeline inside the layers area. But today, you'll learn how to use them properly from start to finish. We'll talk about alpha and luma mats, the differences and similarities between the two, how to create and edit them, as well as some effects to combine them with. So if you're ready to create some cool looking animations using track mats, let's get started. Let's first talk about what a track mat is. Now, for those of you who've used Photoshop before, you may have come across something called a clipping mask. Now, a track mat in After Effects is quite similar to a clipping mask in Photoshop. Now, if you haven't actually used Photoshop before and the words I just uttered mean nothing to you, don't worry, I'll actually talk you through them one by one. Now, the main thing a track mat does in After Effects is to show a layer through another layer. That's really essentially what a track mat is, a way of using a layer to mask another layer. For example, let's say I take this first letter here, the D, and instead of masking it by using one of the traditional masking tools, let's say the rectangle tool like that, I could use any other layer, any other shape to mask this. Or in fact, I could use this shape itself to mask another layer. That's what a track mat is. I'm gonna start by creating a solid, and I'll make this a different color so it's easier to see. And I'll leave the sizes as they are, and then create this. I'm gonna make this a little smaller now so we can see what's going on. Let me just swallow the top two layers here, so it's this solid and the first D. So others are invisible now. If I move this out of the way, you see only those two are visible. And let's say now, I only want this first D to be visible if the red rectangle is touching it. So effectively, I'll be using this red rectangle as a mask for the letter D. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna come down to here where it says toggle switches modes, or the shortcut for this is F4 on the keyboard. So I can just go and tap F4. And you see next to this layer here, the D layer, this one, there's gonna be an option that says track mat. And by default, these are all set to none. If I click on this, you see a list of the mat options. Now, you can only use the layer directly above this as a mat. You see here we have these options, alpha mat, alpha inverted mat, luma mat, and so on. And next to them, you'll only see the name of the layer that's directly above it. For example, if I was to do this for the letter I, the only option I'll have is going to be to use this layer above, D1, as the mat. So if I click here, you see it will say alpha mat, D1, because that's the one directly above it. If I go to Y, this option is going to be M, because this is the layer directly above Y. So that's the first thing you need to keep in mind. You need to have the layer that you're going to use as a mask directly above the layer that you want to be masked. So I'll go to this first layer here, change its track mat from none to the first option, alpha mat. I'll explain what these are in just a minute. But for now, I'm gonna choose this first option, alpha mat, deep red solid, which is the name of this layer here. Now the letter disappears and the red layer disappears. Now you see here, the red layer has been turned off. And also, next to the names of the layers, you have these icons now. This one, the one that's got the dark dot in the middle, means that this layer is being masked, and the one that has the white dot in the middle means that this layer is being used as the mask. So if I now select the D, and if I push this into that rectangle, you see that will start appearing now. As soon as I come out of that rectangle, it disappears. So the rectangle is being used as the mask. Similarly, if I go and undo this, I can move this red rectangle, so if I go select it, push this one on top of the D, you see it makes the letter appear. So the rectangle is being used as the mask. And we should never turn this eye switch on because then it will break the track matness, if you like, of this layer. So that's in a nutshell what a track mat is. The second option here, if I go to the track mat option for the D, the second option is the inverted version of what we just did. So if I go and select this, now anywhere that the rectangle touches the D, the D will disappear. So if the rectangle is outside the D, it's visible. If it's on top of the D, it's invisible. So it just inverts the function of this, like you've inverted a mask. The luma option, or the luminance option, uses not the alpha or the transparency of the rectangle, but the brightness of the rectangle to control whether this letter here is going to be visible or not. So if I select this, now if I put this rectangle on top of it, you see it's a darker shade of that D, 
because the brightness of the rectangle wasn't set to 100%. That's the actual color. So let me just go to that rectangle, go to solid settings. If I take the color here and then make it white, then press OK. And now because the rectangle is white, it's now revealing the layer's contents underneath. Now I'll talk about Luma Matte in a bit more detail later on. For now, I'll select this top layer, the Alpha Matte, and then delete it. I'll unsolo this layer so I can see everything else. And let's say what we want to do is to see this image, the MacBook image. Let me just place this right at the bottom. See this image only through the letters here. Well, that's exactly when we use the track mat. Let me show you. Now, in order to be able to treat all of these letters as a single layer, I need to go and pre-comp them. So I select all of these and then press Command, Shift and C. I'll call this letters. Press OK. Now I can treat the entire logo as a single layer. And if you remember, what we want to do is to show this image only through the letters. Well, I can go to the track mat option of the image and then choose alpha mat letters. And that's it. Now the image here, this MacBook image, is only visible through these letters. Of course, I can now move these layers independently. So I can move that image layer here. I can actually scale it. Like that. Or of course, I can move the letters around and they're independent of each other. Let me show you a trick. Let's say, for example, you wanted to add a stroke around this, maybe a white stroke around this. Now, you can't directly add that to this pre-comp. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me just go into this. Normally, if it's a simple layer like this D here, I can select it, right click, and then layer styles, and then add this stroke. And I can make that any color I like. So let's see if I go and make this white. So that's what that looks like. I'm going to exaggerate this for a second. So I'm going to go and up the size here, let's say to, I don't know, 10 maybe. If I now switch back to the main composition, it's going to use the actual pixels that created the stroke as part of the mask as well. You see that messes things up. If I go back in, I can see the stroke here because I'm using the transparency of this letter as a mask. The whole thing becomes completely visible. So that doesn't work. I'll go and undo this or just delete this stroke. I'll go into this logo here. And for the exact same reason, I can't add the stroke to this layer either. Let me first go and cancel the track mat here. Turn this layer on. If I go and add the stroke to this layer, that looks fine now. Again, I'm going to exaggerate this so we can see what's going on. If I now go and use the top layer as a track mat to the bottom layer, it's going to use all of these pixels of the red stroke as part of the mask as well. So if I go and set this as alpha mat, you see that doesn't work either. So I'll undo that and then delete the layer styles from here as well. So how can I do it? Well, I'm going to go and set this to alpha mat first. And now I can take these two layers, pre-comp them. So that's command shift C again. And I'll call this masked image. Hit OK. And now that's a single layer to which we can apply the stroke. If I go and add the stroke here, now it works. I can now make this white. And that works now. Let me zoom in. Let's say we want to create a different version of this where the letters animate. So I don't want this image to be visible through the letters. I just want the letters to be animated up out of nowhere. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a new comp from scratch. That's Command N. And I'll go and call this animated letters. Same settings as before, and I'll take those layers, copy them, go back in here, and paste. I'm going to press P to reveal position. I'll then go to, let's say, frame 12. I'll lock these in place. I'll go back to the beginning, push them down, so they start animating up from here. So if I play, this is what we have. I'm going to make a bit more space for the timeline. Select all of these layers, press F9 for easy ease, and then I'll hold down Alt and then double click on one of these keyframes to open up the keyframe velocity. And then I'll set these to be, let's say, 75% on both the incoming and the outgoing velocities. So the animation feels a bit more organic. I want to now stagger these so that the D comes in first, then I, then G, then I, and so on. 
You can do that manually, so I can just select these and then kind of push them off one by one. Or there's an alternative way that would be going to the first frame and then selecting all the layers by pressing Command A and then Alt and right square bracket, which is going to trim the end of these layers to be where the playhead is. So each layer becomes one frame long. Now that that's done, I can select these layers in the order I want them to appear. In this case, I want them to appear from D to Y. So I'll select the D first, Shift, select the Y. Then I can right click on one of these, Keyframe Assistant, and I can sequence the layers. Don't have to change anything here. In fact, I can just go and turn off Overlap. Press OK. And now you see the layers will be sequenced. So once the first one ends, the second one starts. And once that ends, the third one starts and so on. That's why we had to set the end of the layers to be one frame long. Of course, now these have to be extended towards right. Like that. And if you want them to be visible at the beginning as well, which shouldn't matter because we're going to make them invisible anyway, you can just go and extend them towards here as well manually. Or on the keyboard, you can press Alt and left square bracket. And it sets the beginning of each layer to be there, and it doesn't touch where the keyframes are. So if I now play, this is what we have. That's looking good. Let me just go to the end and then press Alt right square bracket so it sets the end of these layers to be there as well. And what we want to do now is to make these letters invisible at the beginning, but as they slide up, they'll become visible, as if they're kind of appearing out of nowhere. So for that, I'm going to go and create a solid. And I'll leave the settings as they are. I'll tweak them in a second. I'll then zoom out so I can see what's happening. I'll select that white solid. Make it smaller. You realize that the first D disappeared. That's because it had the alpha mat turned on in the previous comp. So I'll just go and turn this off for now. And what I'll need to do now is to go and find where these letters end up. So I'm going to push this forward. And at this point in time, I need to make sure that the white rectangle covers all of the letters. So I'll make this a little bigger. And then maybe pull this up like that. That looks good. Now, if parts of these letters, let me zoom in first. If some parts of these letters are inside this white rectangle here, when we turn the track mat function on, the overlapping parts, so in this case, this top part here of that D, is going to be visible, and then the same with this D as well. So I need to first make sure that the letters start a little lower, so that there's no overlap at the beginning. So I'll go to the first keyframes of each letter. So I'll go here, and I'll press Shift and the down arrow on the keyboard to move these down by 10 pixels. I'll do the same here as well. So K, Shift and the down arrow. Select this layer. K, Shift and the down arrow. I'll keep doing this for the rest of these as well. And now at the beginning, the characters aren't touching this white rectangle. But at the end, they're completely inside that white rectangle. Which is what we want. And now we'll use the white rectangle as a mask or a mat for these letters. So let me first go and select the letters, and then pre-comp them, Command-Shift-C. And I'll call this Animated Letters Ready to be Masked. And making sure that these are underneath the white solid, I'm just going to go to the Track Mat option and set that to Alpha Mat. And now if I play this, this is what we have. So the letters are only visible where they intersect the white rectangle. So that's what Alpha Mats are. Let's now talk about how Luma mats work. So I'm going to go ahead and create a clean composition for that. I'll call this one Luma mat. And like I explained earlier, let me make a bit more space for this. A Luma mat is going to use the brightness of the layer as a mask. Here's what that means. Let me go ahead and create a solid first. And I'll call this solid noise. And I'll go and apply a noise effect to it. Let's say the fractal noise. And I'll change the fractal type from basic to, let's say, swirly. And then the type from soft to spline. And I can go to transform. Increase the scale, maybe. And I'll animate the evolution to go from 0 to maybe 2 by the time it gets to the end of the timeline. So I'll keyframe it here at 0. Go to the end. Change that to 2. So this is what that animation looks like. Now, let's see what we can do with this. I'm going to go to my project panel, take this letters composition, place this down here. Let me go and first make this noise layer invisible. So this is what we have now, so no animation. 
Let's say I want these to be visible only where this layer is white and then make the letters invisible where this top layer is black. So if I go to the track mat of the letters, change it this time not to alpha because this layer has a 100% alpha channel all across. So if I go and set this to alpha, we're just going to turn the top layer, the size of the top layer into a mask. So if I select this top layer, that's the mask. I'll undo this, but I'll change it to luma, luma mat noise. Now you see, this will start making these bits invisible. Now these aren't actually black, they're invisible. Let me zoom in. Now move here. If I turn the transparency grid on, you see those bits are actually invisible, not black. So if I placed something underneath that, you'd actually start seeing them. Let me zoom back out. And this animation will actually show through this layer as well. Let me go and enable the background again. And if I play this, you see how I'm changing the transparency of this over time. Now let's see how we can use this a bit more practically. So I'll go and enable this layer again. Go to effect controls. And then maybe we can animate the contrast and the brightness of this. Let's say initially I want the letters to be completely invisible. So this will be completely dark or black. So I'm going to go and lower the contrast down and the brightness down. And I'll go to the beginning and keyframe these. I'll then go forward to, let's say, maybe two seconds. And then I'll increase the contrast and the brightness a little bit. Now, if I just leave this as it is and just turn this layer off so it starts working as a mat again, you see at the beginning, the layer is completely invisible. And then gradually, it becomes visible like that. That's because if I go and turn this layer on, that's because this layer, the noise layer, starts completely black and then gradually it becomes brighter. So if I turn this off now, that's what we get. Now if I make this completely white by the time it gets to here, so let me go ahead and turn this layer back on, and then I can increase the brightness, maybe the contrast as well, and up the brightness even more. So by that time it's completely white. If I go back to the beginning, Turn this layer off. At the beginning, the text is going to be completely invisible. And as the time goes on, it's going to become visible, but using the animation that we created with the evolution of the fractal noise. So that's a pretty cool animation. And you can combine this, of course, with some displacement added to this text as well. So if I select the letters, maybe go and add the turbulent displace effect to it. I can go and animate this as well now. So let's say at the beginning, it starts here, say at minus 40 or so. I'll keyframe that, go to two seconds, and then we'll set that to zero. And then if I go back and play, this is what we have now. I can add some evolution to that as well. So if I go back, I can go and animate the evolution as well. So it looks like it's kind of waving about. So I'll go back to the beginning, set the evolution there at zero. Then go to two seconds and then change this to let's say one full evolution. If I go back and play it, and that's what we have now. And just to show you the point that this isn't black, it's transparent, I'm going to go and bring the same image again underneath this. And you see at the beginning, it starts completely invisible. And over time, it starts fading in, but still, this is partially invisible. You can see here, part of this text is invisible still. And that's what a luma mat is. I'm just going to delete this image. The final option here is the inverted luma mat. That's if you just want to invert this animation, so that the white pixels make the text invisible, and the black pixels make the text visible. So if I go and select this inverted option, you see at the beginning, it will start visible, and then over time, it becomes invisible, like that. And that's it. Hopefully you now know what a track mat is and how to use alpha and luma mats in After Effects. Before you go, if you want to win a free, live and fully interactive course, you can enter our weekly prize draw, where you can win a five-day course normally worth over $1,000. All you have to do is to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon here and cross your fingers. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.